Sorry, I nodded at Gruner like I know what that means, but like I'm sure you're right. I'm just agreeing with you out of like uh, reputation. Um, <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, another week of Blind Wines. This week we are once again joined by uh, what we call in the business as Other Henry. Absolutely. Yeah, it was a real nut bomb. That wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, you're going to take me to town for that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... Funnily enough, he's actually not someone who deals with wine, he deals with spirits, but he has seamlessly transitioned into Smarter Than Me in the tasting videos again. Uh, we've got another six wines this week, you know the drill by now. If you want 10% off any of these, uh, hit up the Discord. There's a link where you can get 10% off thanks to Sometimes Always. We we'll always have to start with some cool wines. Uh, I'm feeling pretty thirsty, so let's just hop straight into it. Wine numero uh, one. Uh, I don't know how to say that. Uno! Cloudy little light white kind of thing. Mm. This is Chardonnay. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, mother, for the rabbits. It smells like really good Chardonnay, obviously. It's pretty, it looks, it looks like it, it smells like it, kind of probably what it is. Nice and flinty and reductive. It's got like a nice lifted acidity. Oh, I'm, oh yeah, this is this is funk. I'm really, I'm, I'm jamming this. I'm vibing this real hard. So like, yeah, got this wonderful like reductive barnyard characteristic. Maybe that's the hay playing on my mind in terms of the color itself. Like super savory, like really, really fun. Almost like a little bit of nuttiness. Like makes me think of Jura. It doesn't taste like shit. I'm singing with it. I don't like it. Not as kind of vibrant on the palate as, as it is on the nose, I'd say. Um, it feels pretty neutral. I mean, texture's good, ass is good. Um, nice kind of fleshy stone fruit thing, but overall it's not the most captivating white wine I've had in a while. Maybe a little bit of chill would help, but it's got a kind of nice chewy almondy brioche thing right at the back, so there is some class here, for sure. Mmm, 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 mmm! Oh my goodness, mmm! That's like honey sesame crackers. That's so cool! It's like it's savory, but it's got this like wonderful nuttiness to it. I'm so into it. $37 is what I'd pay for that. That is what I would go for. And I, funnily enough, I would I would probably get like six of this. I'd get six of this. Now, first one, we we're talking about how uh, it was a little bit less filtered. This is heading into the direction of being quite clean and crisp again, but still does have a little bit of the yellow to it. Like honeycomby, but there's this like nice kind of like gummy mochi thing underneath. It reminds me of like a interesting Sauvignon Blanc. Already, I just swilled it around in the glass and I got this magnificent whiff of stone fruit and like I'm this far away from it. So this seems super aromatic. What well, those two wines to drink side by side is really cool because that's not that's giving heaps on the nose, but on the palate it's a little bit leaves a bit more to be desired. Whereas this on the nose is quite quiet, but on the palate it's just beautiful. It is like saline and textural and nutty. Oh, it it feels like good Jura, like Sauvignon or Chardonnay or something like that. It feels like Jura esque. See, now we're getting into like classic Chardonnay territory. This bit of oak that's definitely a bit on oak. There's Malo in that. Bow, show. I bet my first child on it. Yeah, 12. I won't say 35 bucks. Optimistically, 35 bucks. That's what I'd really like to pay for that wine. Wine number three. Or Trez. No, that's 13. Oh. It smells like rich smoked meat or something. Like, oh, I'm about it. Smoky and meaty and yummy. I really hope I like the taste of this because I would love to be able to have this in my house and be like, smell this wine, it's not what you think. Got a good little phenolic structure there as well. A little bit of bitterness, but it kind of makes it a bit more refreshing. And yeah, that stone fruity honey thing kind of follows through on the palate. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is funk, this is skins, this is, oh, this is everything in between. I said Jura for the first one, but I'm gonna have to retract that and say Jura for this. This is where we're really starting to get down like reductive barnyard territory. This is super fun. I have no idea what varietal it is, but it's one of the most unique smelling white wines that we've had on the show for sure. That's so well constructed, I'd pay $60 for that. But with the caveat of, I'd buy two. Just simply because it's a wine of such complexity. It's a wine of grace, elegance, but it's so robust. It's so waxy and phenolic that I, I'd, I'd have two and I, I'd save it for a time when I was really in the mood for it. Chewy, textural, good little skinsy something or other. Yeah, just yum, uh, to be honest. Wine number four. Now this one's really interesting because it's white again. It's that filtered shit, that stuff we were talking about. 
like it's yellow, but realistically it's super clear. Like it's really pretty to sit in the glass and look at. It's got like Gruner vibes. Um, probably a little bit of skin contact Gruner here, probably. Uh, it's got that white peppery thing and then that nashy pear, fleshy stone fruit thing. Roses like cordial as well. Oh yeah, a bit of citrus and nectarine for sure. Like that that um, that yellow nectarine, like those super juicy nectarines. Yeah, gimme, yeah, gimme, gimme, gimme. It smells sweet, uh, like off dry. Like the best way, like, when people try off dry wine, they're like, is this Moscato? And I'm like, no, but I absolutely understand what you're saying because it's what I think it tastes like as well. Yeah, okay. Super smashable. Um, this cold is something that you could drink. You've got friends that aren't into drinking wine and you don't want to buy some, you feel like drinking wine, but you want to include them, buy this stuff. Brunery thing, texture, acid, bridal character. It ticks all the boxes. It's a very good uh, typical example of the style, but I, it's aching for just a little bit more interest and character and charisma. But I, I really enjoy it. Um, and I'd grab three bottles for sure. Uh, wine number five, it took us five wines to get to the reds. Um, and here we go, like, and already, like, I'm kind of getting this wonderful, just wonderful fruit, uh, just from this far away. It smells old school. It smells old school as hell. Very tobacco-y and leathery and, like, figgy, all those kind of things. Your dad's wine, but it feels like there's a bit of class kind of underneath it all. It smells like Shiraz, it smells like, um, it smells like the wines that, I use this phrase all the time, it smells like my dad's wine. Tannin, quite bitter tannin as well. This needs, I think, a bit more time and bottle to just kind of get comfortable. It feels quite, feels quite tight. Um, I'd probably say this is like Cabernet, maybe, I don't know. Um, but yeah, like Cabernet, darker fruits, I think it's more expensive. I reckon this is going to be forty-five dollars, potentially fifty, but I write forty-five, and it's probably another three. Hang on, let's see. Yeah, three. Be an Australian wine, but very much done in that old world style. I think that's probably a GSM or a Cab Sav. Don't know, but a really just well put together wine. I'd be paying, oh, I'd be paying a solid thirty-two dollars. There's not an overwhelming amount of fruit that's really grabbing my attention, but there's not there's nothing wrong with the wine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the wine. I might fix in time, but yeah. And number six. Cool colour, bright and vibrant, definitely a lighter shade. This is cool, we've got a bit of terracotta action going on here, and that's fun. What I mean by terracotta action is, with older wines, you sometimes get that nice little kind of uh, colour around the rim that starts to go a bit terracotta. So that kind of makes me lean towards that, to be honest. Maybe it's not old, and maybe it's just a lighter varietal. It smells like demountable from like public schools, uh, but like new ones, not the ones that smell like feet, because they've had drama classes in there already. Like fresh, cheap housing is what it smells like. Fun. That's super fun. Love the texture. Love that just grippy, racy tannin thing. There's good fun acid and bright fruits underneath it as well. Like that kind of ribenery, a current thing. Didn't put ribena in this one, did you? Fucking hell, lucky. Yeah, cool. And it does have these vegetal characteristics that I'm very, very into. Lighter grapes for sure. It's a sun dried fruit palace. Like, oh, it's scrummy. It's absolutely drinkable. Like, this I'd smash on its own. It's very, very light style. Super, super smashable, but also like slightly more interesting than something like uh, wine number four that was like quite basic in a way. Like there's a little bit of tannin on the back end. There's a little bit of uh, ash and tobacco-y sort of thing coming through. But yeah, cool lineup. I'm really looking forward to see what the boys think of it because uh, we've dis we disagreed a bunch last week and that was really fun. So hopefully we're on the same page again. Uh, another six, an another fun lineup as well this week. Super varied, super interesting. Yeah. What do you guys think overall? Yum. I was I was well aboard the yum train here. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Was, there wasn't really a bad wine. There was not, not a, a singular bad wine and everything had its merit, but there was a couple in there. Absolutely, Jesus. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. There were some ones I would punch through. Line yeah. number one. Um, yeah. I was thinking that this is Chardonnay off the nose, and then yep. I tasted it, I'm like, a bit of funk in there, what's going yeah. on? Luck, what do we have? Oh, hey, okay. That's good, great. It's right where you want it to be. Yeah, it's great. exactly where it should be. And it's Grenache. Oh, no idea. Jürgen, floating on clouds. That's a cool looking bottle. Uh, the label design is sick. Yeah. Do you know anything about it? Uh, we've had one of his wines, one of the producer's wines on the show, and we all thought it was awesome. 
Uh, yeah. It is a Chardonnay from the cool. Mornington Peninsula. Great. Uh, yeah, great. Ben Eugen's <laughs> unbaked texture. Um, yeah, really cool. Um, Interesting on those tasting notes, uh, tasting notes that sometimes always have, it says drink young. So cool. maybe this is sort of like, given the price point, this is what it is. Yeah. Get it now, drink it yeah, now. Yeah. Cool. I mean, yeah, I think that's kind of what he was going for. But I still see there's a lot of pet potential with that wine. I think it's made well enough that there's a bit of longevity as well. I think okay. that's a, that like label wise, that's a dope label yeah. for what you get for out of the bottle. Yeah, it's yeah. a good like judge the book by its cover. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's exactly what it is. Oh, it's perfect. Cool. Visual language. Language five. Good stuff. Yeah. Speaking of perfect, oh, wine man, number it was two. Amazing. Oh my goodness, I was about this. I wasn't sure exactly what it was, but I was sort of like, in the pantheon of the three white wines, I understand. It's not a Chardonnay, it's not a Pinot Gris. I think it's Riesling adjacent. Yeah, I think it's like almost there. My thing was, uh, it feels like Jura. It feels like super oh. high acid, super tense. Great texture. Absolutely. Yeah, it was a real nut bomb. That was not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're gonna take me to town for that one. Aren't you? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, that's well, the higher uh, Yeah, um, it was a real nut bomb for me. Uh, I'm gonna double down on it. That's fine. I that's was getting good. I was getting multiples. Yeah, thirty five bucks. Sixty. I was going forty. Ooh. Bit of a spread. Bit of a spread. Lock. Locky. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. cool. I think yeah. that's where we like yeah. it. Deservingly. Oh yeah. Vouvray. Chenin Blanc. It's Shannon. Wow, okay, that's, I mean, makes sense. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense because it's like high acid, it's textural. Yeah. Fuck, wrong side of burgundy. Hey yeah. man, that's all good. That's a very good wine and I would gladly pay $50 for it. Though. I fucking love it. I, very, very I, good. I love Shannon. Shannon Blanc is my favorite grape variety uh, and that's why. And that's exactly no, why I love it. That is yeah. really cool. Signed, sealed, delivered. It's right. very good. Wine number three was interesting to say the least to me the yep. nose on it what is mm. that doing because i thought it's not like smoked meat yeah i said it's like some like smoked salmon vibes there yeah yeah, yeah 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 there's definitely some meatiness i have there's some reductive characteristics it's funky what um, was yeah. it what was it look okay. okay okay it's not bad okay. kid not bad at all <laughs> <laughs> oh he's done it <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm yeah. out. That is absolutely Jura. Um, Frederick Puffinet, um doesn't Arbois, so I th I'm assuming it's Savignon. Uh, holy shit, dude. Well done. Um, so uh, you've literally nailed it. I was fucking into this wine. It's mine now. Yeah, that's yours. For <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, well done. Wine number four. Uh, this was off dry and smashable for me. I agree with smashable for sure. Yeah. Uh, I didn't find too much sweetness. Three bottles, uh, thirty-two bucks. It's just like a no-brainer. Yeah. yeah, three for twenty-five. Six for thirty. Sick. Yeah, because yeah. like I could definitely like have that every night and not feel bad. And yeah, it's for sure. One hundred and ten dollar Grand Cru. What is it, Lucky? Yeah. Oh, yeah. bang! Cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. In, the, cool, in cool. the slot. Put it yeah. on your wine list yesterday. Mandy, nice. Mandy, Mandy, Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio, great. Wow, must have been pressed immediately, but yeah, that probably explains the like ripe stone fruity thing, uh, because it's just like really, it gets really ripe quickly and then pressed off straight away, because that's Riverland, that's um, Mildura fruit, I believe. Uh, so yeah, no, no skin contact here, just like bang. Fresh. It looks oh, like yeah. the same person who does like Flume's album artwork is doing the labeling for this wine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. It's I'm like, into yes. that. Rave. I'm very into that. That's yeah. a rave wine. That is a I would rave take wine. that wine to a rave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're just sure. not going to disrupt your trip. No. Nah. Yeah. Um, it's going to be, yeah. Oh, yeah, cool fun. Uh, now, Tannin. Um, so <laughs> oh, yes! We yeah. had wine number five here, which was just like, oh, hey, Dad. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it was wine. old school as shit, yeah, man. Dad old wine school, vibes. Old school as hell. Yeah. Um, Three bottles, forty-five dollars. One bottle, twenty-eight. I took six at thirty-two. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah you're going like... over dad's a few times this week. <laughs> Definitely. <Yeah. laughs> Lock what we got. Oh, here it is. So it's not a dad one, more of a daddy one. Oh, what? Can you unwrap that? Yeah, unwrap that boy for us. Yeah, rip it open. Treat it like Christmas Day. Hawke's Bay, New Zealand, 2019. What the fuck? What? No, it's please. What varietal is uh, this? It might be Syrah. I think it might that's be what I, That's what I picked. Cab Merlot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Dad. Hey, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, apparently this is the Lord, and that's an E on the end of that one, just for mm. you playing at home. The Lord oh, of New Zealand. Because Reds. it's from New Zealand. Comedy. Well done, Simon, as always. Uh, cab Sav, Cab Merlot, 
uh, no, sorry, Cab Sav Merlot and Cab Franc, uh, so classic Bordeaux blend. Uh, yeah, this is probably why I'm not a massive fan of it, because I just don't really like Bordeaux blends. It's not made it's for not us. my thing. It's, it's like Classic FM, like it's not made for me, it's still a good radio station though. Yeah, I, I, st I like Jimmy Barnes, but I wouldn't pay mm. money to go see him. No, fine. Um, yeah. Not $110 a ticket. No. Yeah, I'd probably lay it down for a few more years, it yeah. is sleep. This, that's this, probably why we're like, yeah, too much tannin, it's not for me. Yeah. Like, that's it's exactly 19, right. You like, really need to spend a bit of time on this. Yeah, that's 100%. like a 10 year, that's probably, you could lay that down for 10 years and then it'll really open up and yeah, be really 100%. generous with you, but this it's needs too young. some time, uh, a lot of time. Now, yeah, finally, wine number six. In contrast yeah. to wine number five, not your dad's wine. This is just like light and juicy. Yeah. This, is, this is dad's hipster son that's gone to Rainbow Serpent once and just loves red wine now. I yeah. like this wine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, loved it. Big fun. Uh, I want to drink this all the time. Yeah. This yeah. is so much fun. 12 bottles at 35, happy to pay a little bit more. 12 at 45. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, Lock, yeah. Okay, yep, happy Still with that. Payable. Happy no, with that. Happy reasonable. with that. It isn't yep. very... Pay it forward, do your future self a favour. Chianti! Chianti. Right. Wow, okay. That is a different shade of Chianti that I've seen recently. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, it's not as it's not as like um, heavy. It's not as heavy or as tannic. Like, it's terrific. Okay, so this is... Uh, a Swiss couple uh, running a Tuscan estate, Sangiovese that spent a year in concrete and steel, no oak. Right. So it's just designed to be super fresh. That's smashable. That's really cool. Um, yeah, delicious. I'm happy to pay $50 for 100%. Super cool. Absolutely. I'd stay 12 at 55 for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Um, one of the lineup for you guys? Oh, one number two for me. I agree. It's wine number three. Wine it's number the Jura. It's just, it's just the champion. I mm. would, I would not be uh, angry about that choice, but I, I'm going to vote for wine number two. Yeah, two versus one. Sorry. King. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, um, we'll <laughs> wine number two. This is the wine of the lineup this Bang. week. Love it. Thanks so much, guys. See you again next week.